The National Identification Authority has been giving the all clear to continue registering Ghanaians for the Ghana card. A Court of Appeal Judge Anthony Opon, who is sitting as an additional High Court Judge, held that the application for injunction, which calls the suspension of the registration exercise, is based on a grievous error and misunderstanding of the President's social distancing directive. Two citizens, Mark Oliver Kevo and Emmanuel Okra, filed the case in court asking that the NIA be stopped from carrying out the exercise. Another division of the High Court has already granted a 10-day injunction against the NIA in a separate case filed by some 30 residents of the Eastern Region. Court correspondent Joseph Akable was in court as Justice Opong likened the case against the NIA to a drunk giant walking on the lips of a fly. It is bound to fall. Joseph joins us via Skype now. So, Joseph, uh, first we know the two citizens had indicated they wanted to withdraw the case. What happened to that request? And so, per what the court agreed with the lawyer, they went on Thursday. Uh, the case was supposed to be called on Friday at 9.30 a.m. And so at 9.30 when the case was called, the lawyer for the two individuals who filed the case was not present in court. But even before uh, the court proceeded to call the case, uh, the judge did indicate that he has received a document that was filed by uh, lawyers for uh, the two individuals. And the judge made the point that uh, this is a document that is asking the court to allow them to withdraw uh, the case. But he says because they are not around uh, to move the motion, the court will proceed to hear the substantive issue and rule on the injunction as the court had agreed on the previous occasion. And so that was what happened with regards to uh, the application to discontinue the case. It was because they were not available. That is why the court decided that it's proceeding uh, to rule on the injunction as against allowing them to withdraw this particular case. Now, the court then dealt with the injunction and the substantive case. Run us through why it said the NIA is entitled to work and that the rights of the two citizens have not been breached. And so two main issues. The first one uh, related to whether or not the president's directive uh, relating to social distancing and public gatherings, whether it applied to the NIA. And the second issue related to whether the rights of uh, these individuals had been breached in any way. On the first question about uh, the NIA, the president's directive, uh, the court responded that when the president gave the directive, the judge said he had listened extensively to the president's address, and he concluded that that directive does not apply to the National Identification Authority, and that the NIA falls within the class of uh, statutory organizations or ministries, departments, and agencies like the court itself, and that the president said could continue to operate once they keep to social distancing rules and also ensure that they have a system of ensuring that the place remains clean in place and so water for people to wash their hands soap and sanitizers in place and so that directive did not apply to the nia the court again makes the point that uh, the ni the ghana card is not the only means uh, of someone getting onto the ghana's voters role as the plaintiffs have made the point in their case and so he says that even when the registration ends in the eastern region and they are unable to register since they live there they could have the opportunity to register at a later date. And so they cannot make the case that uh, because the registration is ongoing and they feel that they are scared of COVID-19, they cannot go and register. The judge says that is their subjective decision and they cannot on that basis decide that that amounts to a breach of their rights, for which reason they're initiating a right and action against the National Education Authority. Now, you have been speaking with lawyer for the two citizens. What has he been saying about this decision? Uh, Mr. Samuado makes the point that they are yet to determine whether they'll be filing an appeal or not. Uh, but as far as they are concerned, they think that the NIA cannot proceed uh, with the registration because of the pending uh, dependency of the, the other case, which still remains before the court with that injunction in force. We can listen to Mr. Samuado. This particular one, as opposed to a pending injunction that is on them, that is exactly right, but, but that injunction hasn't been moved yet. That's a stance. Once so the there is a, there's a the 10 one elapses. There's, but you see, the, the thing is that once the 10-day one elapses, there's that interlocutory injunction that already would have been filed. And so they will still have to overturn that particular one before. At the heart of all this, I believe, is a common sense approach. We have an uh, a pandemic facing us. 
and if we have put in structures that say social distancing should be the thing, why would we want to endanger the lives of the people of the East region? At least for the past 10 days, we've held and make sure that the NIA has not been able to do what it wanted to do. There's an order that is operating against them. So we leave it to the judgment of the general public. And it's the Ghanaian citizen that is at stake, not us. At the end of the court, what was that banter with the DTAG about? Oh, I think that uh, he sought to make certain comments which were not true and which were not born out of facts, and I sought to put it out clearly. He tried to attribute certain statements to me which were not true. What I said, I have put out, and that's one I can defend. But what I haven't said, he could not put in my mouth. And I think it was important that that was brought to the attention of the court. You don't impugn the integrity of another lawyer in court. And I think that at the end of the day, he himself later on came to say that, let's call it, let's just let this issue die. I said, no problem. But you don't do that when you know that the basis of what you are saying is not true. And I pointed it out to him that I, if you go to my Facebook page, you will see what I wrote. It was very clear that we were going to discontinue. That was it. Now, Nick Pakpo Samwa Ado is a lawyer for the two citizens who took the NIA to court seeking to stop their registration exercise. Now, Joseph Akable is still on, the, uh, it's, it's still on Skype with me. Now, Joseph, the lawyer made reference to some drama that took place in court. Can you tell us exactly what happened? And so this was right after uh, Justice Anthony Opon had delivered his ruling. Uh, right after he had finished, the Deputy Attorney General Godfrey de Boadame uh, raised his hand that uh, there was an issue he wanted to say. And he wanted to correct something that a judge had said, which related to the reason why he proceeded to deal with the injunction and not have waited for them to discontinue the case. And while Godfrey Adame was speaking, uh, Mr. Samuado raised his hand and wanted to speak. And so the deputy AG was reminding him that he was on his feet, so at least allow him to finish his address to the court before he continues. Uh, but Mr. Dame was of the view that Mr. Samuado needs to allow him to finish. Mr. Samuado insisted that he wanted to make a correction. And so the back and forth ensued. For some time, the judge intervened, asked them to calm down. At that point, the deputy attorney general made reference to a Facebook post which he had on his phone, which he was trying to read to the court that... Uh, Mr. Samuardo had posted something on Facebook which does not really help the image of the court. And so he wanted to draw the court's attention uh, to that particular post. Mr. Samuardo stood up and uh, kept insisting that that is not accurate. The judge at that point asked the two lawyers to resume their seat, but that was not before, uh, that was just before, before he had said that the Deputy Attorney General made a remark that uh, they were not in a market room and that they were in a courtroom. And so the judge asked them to resume their seats, then the judge proceeded to. Uh, comment on the aspects relating to why he had asked the discontinuance and not to take place and rather rule on the matter. Another interesting aspect of the case also has to do with the issue of cost, and that has generated some discussion as well. And so Deputy Attorney General Godfrey de Boadami waived cost. Uh, in, in terms of cost, they are just asking uh, the person who has dragged uh, you to court, who has lost the case. You are asking that the court ask the person to pay you some money to cater for your legal fees which you've expended because the person has brought a case that the court has disagreed with in simple terms has wasted your time and so deputy ag governor dami waived the cost but the lawyer for the nia akweku isirifi asked for cost of twenty thousand cities uh, but the judge granted a cost of six thousand cities so each of the individuals who brought the case to court had to pay three thousand cities each and so uh, that is also another issue that has generated a bit of uh, discussion on social media that these are people who have taken up a matter believing that they want to help in containing the spread of COVID-19 and they've also had uh, to lose an amount of 6,000 cities as a result of a decision going against them as well. So th that is it by way of the banter and additional information relating to the cost that was awarded. All right, thank you very much, uh, Court Correspondent Joseph Akablemua, Deputy Minister for Monitoring and Evaluation, William Savi says, it is very possible the National Identification Authority will resume registration for Ghana cats in the eastern region after a court in Accra ruled in favor of the authority. He says, although the decision has not been taken yet, it is only natural that they will have to resume work because the court saw nothing wrong with the operation. He says the Monitoring and Evaluation Ministry, which supervises the work of the NIA, will consult with management of the authority and the decision will be announced soon. He says the NIA has always taken precautionary measures to ensure adequate social distancing when the exercise was rolled out and so there was no basis for them to stop work. He has been addressing the media outside Parliament House. The idea is to ensure that every Ghanaian has a card. I appreciate the fact that the, we have a, a critical situation as of now, and the fact that the person who took us to court 
in his view, felt that maybe we were going against the measures that have been put in place by the president to ensure that we don't spread the uh, virus infection any longer. He had a good concern, but I think we have to go back to um, the instructions or the measures that the government put in place, as the, His Excellency the President explained. He gave us certain measures to take. First of all, social distancing, so that even if there's any infection from anybody, it doesn't spread. We are also being informed to do hands washing with um, soup and the running water as often as possible. And we have been advised to use hand sanitizers. All these, and then uh, face masks where possible. All these are measures to ensure that uh, we don't infect each other. The National Education Authority also decided to put measures in place to ensure that we are actually going by what the president has advised us to do. I can't say on my own here, as we said, that we are going back to the field. This was um, a decision that we took as a board, the board with the minister and then with the chief executive of NIA, the management there. And we had to withdraw when the uh, court gave us the uh, interlocutory injunction. Now, as the judgment has come out, it means the team will still have to go and sit down and then see whether or not we are going back. And if we are going back, how are we going to ensure that we still maintain the measures that are put in place to ensure that we avoid infection? Even though that decision has not been taken, but I can say that it's very possible that we will go. But we will need to meet and discuss before the final decision.